Hi everyone, welcome to Modern Optimization Methods. Today we will introduce the last part of Chapter Five, the convergence of nonlinear conjugate gradient methods. Recall that in linear conjugate gradient method, the algorithm will terminate in finite steps. However, this is not the case for nonlinear conjugate gradient directions. In fact, we wish that the algorithm will converge somehow, like the linear conjugate gradient method. However, in practice, we do it like this. In each time, we start with the steepest descent directions, and after n steps, we assume that this is a one round of linear conjugate gradient methods. Then after that, we will set the search direction PK as the steepest descent method again, and then run the linear conjugate direction method. So we assume that this will lead to an n-step quadratic convergence rate. In other words, for each n-step, the iteration will be much closer to the previous iteration in terms of twice squares. And in practice, the n step is really especially for the large scale problem. In fact, restarts also depends on the following conditions. For example, when the angle between the successive two gradients over the norm of the current gradient, then we will restart the algorithm. Okay? So it means that restarting is a very common technique to the nonlinear conjugate gradient method. And to address the global convergence mathematically, let's make the following assumptions. For example, we, in the first condition, we assume that the level set is bounded, which is a common assumption, actually. And in the second part, we assume that in some open neighborhood of this level set, the objective function is Lipschitz continuously differentiable. And these assumptions imply that there is a constant gamma bar which can bound the norm of the gradient over the large area or L. Okay? So under the settings above, then we can show that the nonlinear conjugate gradient method implemented with a line search that satisfies the strong wolf conditions will have the following convergence result. So the result basically is a weak global convergence result. Okay? So it means that there is a subsequence of the gradient whose norm will converge to zero. Okay? So this is actually explains that for nonlinear conjugate gradient method, we only got weak global convergence rate. And also the settings, we have some specification. For example, we need the line search to be a strong wolf conditions. And also we update by the FR strategy. Okay? And this is actually not always the case for the nonlinear conjugate gradient method. We have showed that there will be counterexamples that when we applied the nonlinear conjugate gradient method, the algorithm will not converge. Okay? So we put this as a result or as a theorem. So we consider the PR method with an ideal line search. And there is uh, we can find a twice continuously differentiable function in three dimensional 2R case, okay? Only a three variable optimization problem with a starting point x star such that the resulting nonlinear conjugate gradient method will not converge. In other words, the sequence of the gradient 
is always bounded away from zero. It will never converges, even for the subsequence, it's not converging. Okay. So in other words, in very bad situations, the nonlinear conjugate gradient method may not converge. However, for most cases, it will converge in terms of local, uh, in terms of weekly global convergence. Okay. And finally, we will end up this chapter by showing some numerical results, which was uh, originally from the numerical optimization book by Nosido and Wright. And the parameters are setting as follows. We use strong wolf condition by specifying the C1, the C2 parameter here, and also we stop the algorithm when the infinite norm of gradient is smaller than some bounded value here, or the number of iterations is more than 10,000. Here, this MOD means that the number of modifications for the coefficient beta PR to try to make it positive, okay? Now, the results are presented in the following tables. So when we evaluate the performance of the nonlinear conjugate gradient methods, we are actually care about the number of function values on the right-hand side and also the number of total iterations on the left-hand side for each column. So as we can see that for the tested examples here, and the performance of FR is not as good as PR or PRP, PR plus, okay? Because uh, FR have large number of iterations as well as the large number of function evaluations Compared PR plus with PR, it seems that PR plus tends to be better than PR because it has even smaller function values as well as number of iterations. And the number of PR plus, the modification is as this because for example, the two, example two, you got one modification and for example three, you got three modifications. By such three modifications, the number of iterations and number of function values have significantly been reduced, okay? So meaning that the PR plus will do have its impact on the performance of the algorithms, okay? Now, let's make a brief summary about this part. We have addressed the convergence result for nonlinear conjugate gradient method, and we also present some numerical performance for the PR and FR method. Finally, let's make a brief summary about this chapter. We have introduced the linear conjugate gradient me method as well as nonlinear conjugate gradient methods including their ideas, algorithms, as well as convergence rate and global convergence. Also, finally, we present some examples and numerical results for nonlinear conjugate gradient methods. Okay, so we stop here and see you next time.